following set of questions is from a resource provided by the Florida Department of Education called the Big M, and it outlines what you're supposed to know, and it actually gives sample questions of what you're supposed to know. So I'm going to be working through those questions. This will be a multi-part series. Um, there will be seven different videos with different sample questions of anywhere from 10 to 15 questions per video. Um, and we'll start from the beginning. Here we go. Okay, so the following set of questions is actually from a resource provided by the Florida Department of Education called the Big M, and it has sample questions of what you're supposed to know for testing in terms of like the standards. So um, this will be a multi-part series. There'll actually be seven videos with about 10 to 15 questions per video. And I'll just start here. These are the standards that are covered in this video, and then the other videos will have um, different standards that are covered. So the first, Sample question right here, it says use rectangle A, B, C, D to fill in the blanks. In rectangles, opposite sides are congruent, which means that line segment A, B right here is congruent to line segment C, D. Triangles A, B, C, and C, D, A, so A, B, C would be this triangle and C, D, A would be this one, can be proven congruent by hypotenuse leg because line segment AC is a shared side, and that's the hypotenuse of both. So line segment AC is a hypotenuse of both triangles. Okay, next question. Which of the following sets of triangles can be proven as congruent based on the information? Choose all that apply. So in this case, I'm going to go through each answer choice and determine whether those triangles are congruent. So A, D, E and ACD. I can see right away those two triangles are not congruent, so this is not an answer. ABC and ACD. Again, I can see that this triangle and this triangle not congruent. ADE and ACB. Yes, those two triangles are congruent, so that is a correct answer. And the next one are a little bit tricky because these triangles aren't drawn. So CEA, which would be right here, this triangle here, is congruent to ACD. ACD. Yes, this triangle would be congruent to this one even though it's not drawn. So that is a correct answer as well. Let me erase my marks to have a clean slate again. And then it says triangle BDE. So that would be right here, this triangle. Is it equal to ACD? Yes, it is. So I can choose that one as well. So even though the triangle wasn't drawn, it is still um, a triangle congruent to the other one. Okay, for this one, it said, what is the value of x? What value of x will make m the midpoint of pq? The best way to do this is to draw the segment. m is the midpoint of pq, and then I can label the segment. So pm is 3x minus 1, pq, so that would be this entire thing, is 5x plus 3. Um, it would be tempting at first to set these equal, but that's not what is happening here. If this is the midpoint, then this is 3x minus 1 as well. So essentially, 2 3x minus 1s equals the whole length 5x plus 3. And then we can solve. So you distribute here. 6x minus 2 equals 5x plus 3. And I'm just solving this equation, and I get x equals 5. Okay, on to the next question. Okay, here is another situation where we're going to have to sketch it out to see what's going on. It says two lines intersect at point P. So I'm going to have two lines that intersect at point P. Okay, if the measure of a pair of vertical angles are here, determine X and the measure of the other two angles. So these are vertical angles, so I'll put this here, making them vertical angles. And first step is to find x. So I'm going to find x by setting these equal to solve for x since vertical angles are equal. x equals 20. So I can plug that in here. And then for this, it wants to know what this angle measure is. If you plug in 20 for x, what happens? We get 40 minus 7. So that would be 33 degrees. So this is 33 degrees, this angle measure. 33 degrees. This one as well, you plug in the value of x, you get 33, which makes sense because vertical angle should be the same value. 
And then it asks for the measure of the other two angles. Well, this angle and this angle would be supplementary to that. So 180 minus 33 comes out to 147 degrees, and that is what they are looking for right here, 147. Okay, now the next one, this diagram here, it says that GH is the mid-segment of this triangle here. And it also says that DE is the mid-segment of this triangle. So you've got two different things going on here. The mid-segment should be half of the length of the base of that triangle. So it says that GH is 1.5. What is the length of BC? So if this is 1.5, I can double that to get the length of this. And then this is the mid-segment of this triangle. So I can double 3, 3 times 2, to get 6. So this length of BC is actually 6, and that is the answer. Okay, and the next question. Okay, the next few are very similar. It says that ED is the mid-segment of this triangle. Now, mid-segment hits at the midpoint of these two lines. So this length is the same length as this. And then this segment is the same length as this. So it hits at the mid-segment of triangle ABC. It says AD is 12, EC is 10. What is the length of DC? Well, DC must be 12. So I'll put that here. What is the length of BE? Well, these two segments are the same length, so this must be 10. Okay, the next one is very similar to that. Again, it tells us that EC is a mid-segment. Okay, that means it hits at the midpoint of each of these segments of the triangle. It says CD is 8, FE is 10. What is the length of ED? Well, it would have to be 10. And then what is the length of BC here? It would be 8 because these two are the same length. And this point C is the midpoint of that segment. Okay, next question. Another similar problem. I like these because they're pretty simple. It says that EC is another mid-segment, meaning this is the midpoint here of both of those segments. FD, this time it gave us this entire segment, is 18. CD is 10. What is the length of ED right here? Well, if this whole thing is 18 and it's split up in half, then this would be 9 and 9, and ED must be 9. What is the length of segment BD? Well, this whole thing, 10 plus 10, would be 20. So it is 20. Okay, next problem. Um, this one right here, given parallelogram W, X, Y, Z, and it gives us some expressions. The only way to do this is to draw it out. So I'm gonna draw a parallelogram. And then when I label it, I need to make sure I label these coordinates in order so that way everything falls into place. So I'll say W, X, Y, Z. And as long as I put those in order, it could go Clockwise, it could go counterclockwise. As long as they're in order, it will work out. So WX is 2X plus 15. XY is X plus 27. And YZ, 4X minus 21. Okay, so at this point, it asks for the length of ZW. So this is going to be multiple steps. First things first, I'm going to put these equal to each other to find X, since in a parallelogram, opposite sides are equal. So 2x plus 15 equals 4x minus 21. And I'm just going to go through the process of solving here. We get x equals 18. So x equals 18. Um, but it doesn't ask for x, it asks for the length of zw. Since it's a parallelogram, this is the same length as this. So if I find the length of xy, then I'll have the length of ZW. So I'm going to plug in 18 for X, 18 plus 27, which would be 45. So that means this must be 45. So the length of ZW is 45. Next question. Looks like we have one more. Actually, this one is the same same scenario, the same numbers and everything as the last one. So it asks for x, which we found here. x is 18. The length of xy, let's see, xy would be x plus 27. 
18 plus 27 would be 45. And then the length of Wx. Wx right here is 2x. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize. Wx right here is 2x plus 15. So 2x plus 15 Wx. So we can plug in 18 and find this length. 36 plus 15. 51. Perfect. And then one of my students asked why this came out shorter than this. So this is coming out to be 45 and this is coming out to be 51 and it looks shorter. That's because when I labeled these points, um, it wasn't based on any more information than a parallelogram. So technically, now that I know the numbers, it should be drawn maybe more like this, like this is a shorter side and this is a longer side. But as long as you label the points in order, it doesn't matter. The numbers will come out right. Right, it's just the scale of your drawing isn't correct. So that is why that happened. Okay, so that is all for this video. There are going to be six more of these. Um, so I will have those linked down below if you'd like more of this content.